Good morning, everyone. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham Day. This man, zoomed out, is the man that we call Bibi. See more of the room today, Bib. You started off with a fisheye lens. Yeah, I have, yeah. I've been just going to, like I said, I'm going to keep this camera on, I think. Uh, can you see me? Fuck it. No, you can't see my dressing gown on the floor. I just, it was too <laughs> hot this frosty. morning, so I just threw it on the floor. But I like this, I like this view. I like to see the wall. There is stuff that I need to get on the wall at some point, but I, I like it. You get to see the whole room. It's nice. Yeah, we get to see the uh, the stealthy 2K. Uh, I'll, I'll switch to big, 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 big bib. There we go. Uh, so you get to see the stealthy 2K box over the shoulder. Hey, nice, nice. And Thanks, we, we... What's that? I was going to say thanks to the Shagger, shagger Asim. Yeah, and then we also get to see the cat as he uh, as he or she jumps on, on the windowsill. Was there a minute ago, <laughs> not there anymore. Just before we went <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Stage fright. Oh, oh, I'm not getting commission for this. I'm getting out of here. Uh, but anyway, welcome in, everyone. Welcome in. Let's jump into the split screen section. My name, as mentioned, is Graham Bay. This is Bibi, and we together are Ice Cream Uploads in true ice creamy fashion. This is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, and, uh, you know, we might, we might say so. But anyway, we're going to bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories in the world of video games, and we want to give you our thoughts and impressions on those stories. And not only do we want to give you our thoughts and impressions, but we would like your thoughts and impressions. Your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. There's lots of thoughts and impressions. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. But anyway, we want you to get involved. You have a live here right now on, on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. Ish ish okay. so, yeah yeah not, not too bad before half 10 today like 25 past nine so yeah yeah it's clearly a good work day for us today uh, obviously <laughs> the, the start time does depend on work outside of the stream so yeah obviously that's why it does vary but anyway we do go live at 10 a.m ish each and every single weekday and everyone involved in the chat you guys i know there's a few of you in already i will call you out in just a few seconds but uh use your voices feel free because we turn this into a podcast a video for youtube and an audio podcast on itunes spotify soundcloud and google play so please feel free to use your voice on behalf of those watching and listening a little bit later on but before we jump into the shout outs and the, and the news that we're going to be talking about and things like that a couple of things to mention first of all um I mean, you can see the 2K box just over Bibi's shoulder. He did mention uh, Shagger Asim uh, in response to that, who is in the chat. But shout out to Asim and the guys at 2K UK because we do have a giveaway running now. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat uh, will bring you a link to our tweet. We have a competition running where we're giving away a selection of 2K UK games. That's 2K um, PGA 2K21, which you can see over Bibi's shoulder, WWE 2K Battlegrounds, and 2K Mafia Trilogy. I'm going to keep saying that every day. I know it's we're getting boring for you all now, but I'm going to keep saying it anyway. As well as that, a Muscle Moose selection box. Uh, thanks to the lovely people at Muscle Moose. All of those can be won just by entering the giveaway. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat is the link for that. The other thing to mention is we do have a sub-only giveaway as well. We do that every month. The loot drop, exclamation mark loot drop for that. And this month's prize in the loot drop will be Cyberpunk, exclamation mark Cyberpunk, if you want more specific details. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel, be in the Discord, and link your Discord and Twitch accounts, and then that's it. You're already entered. Boom. Bosh. Whew. Okay, sales pitch over. Hey, welcome in Bacon Chin, who was in early this morning. And Bacon Chin, thank you very much for the uh, the three month sub. Four, no, no, wait, wait, three months in a row, four total. Nice, there we go, there we go. Thank you very thank much, you. Bacon Chin, much appreciated, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, Do I have an... What's that? What, you, you, you're at Prime? I'm going to check mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check mine. I don't think mine's up I'm yet. Pay for... My content is that good, I'm going to pay for it. You know oh what I mean? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh... Um, uh, Gagad, who was in as early as well, says he's probably not in Stay now. Frosty. He does. Hey, we've got Babinho with a with a twenty eight month sub. Yeah, nine That's months like in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Gagad, who's probably in a meeting now, was in early. Nice, nice, nice. Tito, good morning. How's things, dude? Welcome in. Nice, nice sword of power. I see you wielding it very freshly. Nice, nice. Um, Bick and chin. Did someone say prime? There we go. Hey. <laughs> Hype train? Do we have a hype train? I don't think we do have a hype train, do we? No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, is, is it three sub activates? Yeah, I think three ish activates it um, in a in a five minute period or something like that. Um, Tux Raw, hey uh, Tux. I keep saying Tux T U X, uh, but Raw. Anyway, welcome in, dude. How's things? How's things? Nice to have you in. Nice to have you. Morning, in. mate. Um, Viv, dude. <laughs> uh, Gagad's doing the lurk. Thank you very much. Graham, Bibi, beautiful people. Cheers, Bib. How's things? How's things? How are we all doing Morning. today? Um, I made the school by error of putting a hoodie on, and it's incredibly warm in this room, so I might have to mm -hmm. uh, turn around and put the fan on. Uh, that's why I peeled the dressing gown off. 
Ugh, ugh. Anyway, anyway, uh, we are well over here. LaRoche, hey, welcome in. Everyone's here this morning. Everyone's here this morning. Okay, we do have um, a, a little bit of news that we should we should jump straight into. There's actually two parts to it. The first part we're going to start with. We probably should start with the bit that's been confirmed. However, that's not the exciting bit. So we will start off uh, with the rumoured part. Um, does anybody in the chat play Fortnite? If you don't, hey. <laughs> if you don't, is anybody in the chat interested in Star Wars crossovers? We had that last Christmas. Um, um. I d <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> I don't tend to play too much Fortnite. I play when there's something in it that gets my attention. So last Christmas, I played for the Star Wars content. At the moment, I'm grinding at the end of the, the past to try get Iron Man because I like Marvel bits. Anyway, I might be playing again. So the tweet I put out yesterday is just when I thought I was out, they pulled me right back in. And that's uh, related to this that's not showing great <laughs> nice <laughs> i'll try again there we go um this is written by david Persol at deserto.com and it says baby yoda coming in fortnite season five mandalorian star wars theme leaked so huge fortnite season five leaks have revealed the next major update will be a crossover with star wars and the mandalorian featuring baby yoda yeah <laughs> thing you love to see <laughs> christmas christmas time fortnite last year was I know, we, I know we said yesterday, was it yesterday that we have Christmas yeah, games? But yeah. this literally was our Christmas game last year. Me and Graham smashed the ever-living shit out of this game <laughs> to try and get level 100. Oh, uh, one thing I need to do, though, whilst we're not jumping back into the article just yet, is make sure I don't have, like, Epic or something open because uh, my PC is chugging. Bibby looks like I'm looking at him in bric-a-brac. Yeah, Epic Games... And... Of course it is. <laughs> heard the word Fortnite and booted itself up. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, and Steam Quiet Bootstrapper as well. Get out of there, Steam. Uh, that might make Bibi look a little bit more uh, in colour. But anyway, let's jump back to the article. Um, the update is expected to land at the end of November with Epic Games continuing their relationship with Disney. Previous seasons have been all about Marvel and following on from the success of The Mandalorian Season 2, it looks like the game is set to strike while the iron is hot on the hype. Is is that even a phrase? The iron is hot on the hype? <laughs> don't know. That's a mixture of phrases. Anyway, <laughs> on November... It is now. It is. Yeah, GG's, DeSoto. Uh, on November 24th, within the week, uh, the patch is expected to roll out. Leakers, Sheena BR, and others are reporting the crossover is imminent. First of all, the data miner tweeted, so the next battle pass is Star Wars themed. Both the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda will be a part of it. Um, Fortnite Season 5 Battle Pass leaked uh, Star Wars Mandalorian. This this very quickly caught the attention of fans before later posting a leaked image of the Battle Pass advertising. As seen below, there is an image of Fortnite skins spearheaded by the Mandalorian. And to his side, you can see little baby Yoda, which will presumably be a back bling in the next major update. Um, we do have the next bit of news. I will jump into this as a separate article. I will leave that. For now but is anyone interested in playing fortnite would anyone be interested in playing fortnite uh for more star wars content over christmas bib i think i can kind of guess your answer what what, what we're saying god yes yes <laughs> yes 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 absolutely we talked about this before we went on, uh, before we went on air and it 110 percent will be uh, level 100 material list it will be you won't be able to play as a mandalorian i can't even imagine it being one of the ones Thank where you, you can pay like 20 pounds like the last laugh bundle that we've just seen i was genuinely waiting for payday to be able to get the last laugh bundle so i could play as the play as the joker what is the point when i know that in a couple of weeks time i will have the ability to be able to play as a mandalorian um with baby Yoda as my bat bling so that the joker stuff goes right out the window um, but <laughs> get out of here pass. yeah exactly but every season i like to go in or every season i participate in i like to go in as a new as a new character do you know what i mean like i'm, I'm thinking I, I think it's scorpion that i've still got um from Scorp. baby yeah from like three it was christmas last year when we grinded it down it, yeah um, it was one of the like it was it was a robotic looking character that looked incredibly like scorpion from mortal kombat yeah, yeah, yeah. but then there was another skill that look uh, skill uh, another skin that looked like sub-zero um so obviously I went for the Scorpion one. Uh, before that, I had um, what looked exactly like Old Snake. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just I, I need a new one. And if I can have Mandalorian and Baby Yoda and grind all the way to it, then I absolutely would be. And that's exactly something that we want to we want to go into around the Christmas period. We talked about Christmas games. If everyone else wants to join with us and we're just rolling as four men for like two weeks, what's better than that? <laughs> Who's looking better? 
<laughs> Who's looking better? Everyone's running around like a, a squad of Mandalorians. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I mean, I I don't put much money into Fortnite. I've, I've paid for the Battle Pass a million years ago, and I've had enough coin, uh, V bucks or whatever they're called, to pay for the next one. Which which is one of the best things about Fortnite: the fact that it's a self sustaining economy just for playtime. The idea is that you have enough fun while you play it to maybe spend a bit more. Uh, rather than forcing you to opt in to every new season, uh, mm-hmm. which I love that idea about it. That said, I did buy skins. Um, last Christmas, I bought the Kylo Ren skin because, I mean, for those of you that uh, know me, uh, I'm partial to a good helmet. Hey. Uh, which is the reason why if I turn around, uh, you can see I have the Doom Slayer helmet there, and you might not be able to see it because the fan's in the way, but I have a PUBG Level 3 helmet there. Um, that's the reason why I, I bought Kylo Ren last year. Cool helmet, nice. Uh, that's the reason why I'm grinding towards um, Iron Man level 100. Amazing helmet, nice. Uh, but then next season, Mandalorian, probably one of the coolest helmets out there. My God. So, so okay, I'm going to have to buy another skin now. So, yeah, I thought I'm never going to have to buy a skin ever again because I've got Kylo Ren. I'm not really going to surpass that, but but here we are. Here we are. <laughs> uh, they know what they're doing. They do, they do, they do. Uh, let's jump back through the chat then. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Bibby after dark says Viv. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know what that was in reference to, but you've clearly been You're looking at our it. our schedule for later on. I see. <laughs> um, uh, so Viv, lurking whilst working, we appreciate all the lurkers genuinely. He, uh, even if you can't even be here, uh, just people lurking and and going AFK kind of thing. I know it's not necessarily pa- being part of the chat, but it does help the channel. So anyone that does put the effort in. Whether it's lurking uh, or being AFK or being in the chat and regularly on on uh, streams, it, d- it doesn't matter. Any sort of support, we absolutely appreciate. So cheers, cheers, Larush. Um, I love Star Wars cross dress. <laughs> says Viz. I don't, I don't think that was. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and then he goes on to calls BRB. <laughs> I don't think you got the point, Viv. But I, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> yeah. um, hand up here, says LaRoche. Uh, James says, I play it ish. <laughs> ish. you goddamn right. I mean, I've been playing it this week. I don't play it regularly. So I was level non two or three weeks ago. I'm like level 78 uh, because I've been grinding it. I'll do my PUBG dailies, then turn it off, and then I'll start on Fortnite and play for a few hours with, with Danielle being my little sort of second set of eyes. Um, because it's a nice change. It's it's a really fun, easy opt-in change until you get down to the final circle. If there's if there's a decent player in the final circle, yeah, I'm not gonna win. I'm not gonna win. Uh, I won a couple of games back to back the other night, not because I've suddenly learnt like I'm a master builder. I've got incredible skill. No, it was me and another guy having a shoot off. I can shoot a gun like nobody's business. I can't build. I can build a ramp and a wall. <laughs> That's it. Yes. Um, but it's still far more advanced than Bibs. So I'll take that. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't build at all in a gun in a gunfight. I'll. I'll put my back on. I'll I'll rate myself in a gunfight as long as there's no no building involved. Um, but the thing is, even winning a game, you'll get like Thank what four thousand XP. Cream. It doesn't really matter once you've ticked off what you need to do, like uh, collecting wood or collecting brick, getting some machine gun kills or whatever. Then winning the match gets you like four k XP. It's not really that much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you went two back to back, then it's fine. The two time yeah. back to back once oh. on four times. <laughs> Are you gonna spend all that eight k on me? Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, Tito says the hitbox of Baby Yoda will be so small that it'd be impossible to hit. Imagine if that was the case. Imagine if Baby Yoda wasn't a back bling and was just this tiny little character running around. It's like <laughs> like playing as Odd Job and Goldeneye back in the day on the N sixty four. You can't even like, you can't do the swipe to him because he's too small. <laughs> um. Jetpack will be awesome, LaRoche. I mean, that's pretty much it already, actually. They've got Iron Man's jetpack at the moment. So I can see that just being reskinned silver so that that's still in. Um, I don't use it, though, because if you go up too high and you run out, you fall to your death. So I, I, I'm i the kind of person that probably forget and just double tap X and go, oh, no, I'm going too high while still holding X as I keep going higher and higher. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, Steel Bonsai and LaRoche, thank you very much for the hosts, guys. Much appreciated that. Uh, we appreciate nice the support. Fun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got baby no hey! <laughs> onlyfans.com slash we've got baby no nice uh, when I see lur- when I say lurking I mean procrastinate that's fine that's fine it's all the same it's all the same Ex- exclamation mark lurk says so you sat at the back of the ice cream van it doesn't say what you're doing <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> uh, slack is, oh, is, it, is that my slack that is my slack I didn't even realise it was open okay notifications on slack are dead 
There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually have multiple notifications. I literally had, uh, like, not the equivalent of banner blindness, but to Slack. I just didn't notice the notifications then. I have, I've had at least three of them while we've been live. So, yeah. Apologies. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, imagine that like Kirk saying it. I, I will. Oh, it's fine. Mr. Gary Clark. Here he is, the scrubber himself. Hey. Hey. Bye, mate. Sponging his retweets. Hey. Hey. <laughs> if, if anyone doesn't know the uh, reference, uh, Gary Clark bought a PS5. As a lot of people did, his PS5 turned up and it looked like someone had used it as a football. There was a big dirty scuff mark on the outside of the console. Anyway, he, um, like a proper Mrs. Hinch off of his Instagram, has found the expert cleaning product that you need to scrub away all of the dirt and grime off of your PS5, which actually might come in useful for a number of people that, that visit certain websites on their consoles. You might need a sponge to clean off your peripherals, as we found, uh, found out the other day. And we mentioned yesterday that Pornhub is accessed... Uh, about 50 to 60% of the audience that, that access to Pornhub is done off of a console. So, yeah, there you go. That's why Gary Clark bought these cleaning products. It's absolutely not for the uh, the dirt mark that was on the outside. But yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire 2, sorry, Gary Clark, says Mr. T. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's progress, though. So, so we do have... Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian uh, potentially coming to Fortnite. It's, it's pretty much nailed on. The reason that we can say that with a degree of confidence is, well, first of all, it's, it's notable uh, industry leakers, not Tassim and Veer. This is different ones. These are Fortnite leakers uh, that have come up with the evidence. But the evidence came alongside previous other leaks that have now been uh, proven, such as this written by Lauren Aitken. Excuse me, at VG247, it says, Fortnite Crew monthly subscription service launches alongside Season 5 with exclusive crew outfit pack. So alongside the launch of Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5, Fortnite players can become members of the all-new Fortnite Crew subscription service. There's not long left before the Galactus event brings about the end of Season 4, and we know that Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5 will begin on December the 2nd after a lengthy downtime. Rumours were circulating that a subscription service would be coming to Fortnite soon, and we finally have more details about it. Starting on December the 2nd, you'll be able to subscribe to Fortnite Crew, which will set you back $9.99 a month. You'll get the Galaxia outfit and style right away just for joining plus the cosmic llama corn pickaxe and fractured world back bling the seasonal uh, the seasonal battle pass will also be included in the monthly price and you'll receive 1000 v bucks every month alongside a monthly crew pack which comes with exclusive always new gear we've created a short faq to cover all bases which you can check out below um okay we're not bothered about how do i subscribe or how do i cancel what's in it that's fine uh what does it mean that crew packs are exclusive? Fortnite crew packs and the items they contain are only available available to Fortnite crew subscribers. They will never be sold or given away to non-crew members, meaning that they will never appear in the regular Fortnite storefront. Um, what happens if I've already bought a battle pass? You get the V-Bucks back, which is nice. Um, okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I will leave it there for now. We get the idea. But Fortnite crew subscription is coming. $9.99 includes battle passes and V-Bucks, and exclusive skins. Bib, thoughts? What about if you do Because I can't see anything in the FAQs to say if I just did it for a month, got the Battle Pass, got the 1,000 V-Bucks, got the exclusive skin, and then dipped the month after, will I still be able to play the, the, the Battle Pass? Like It seems like a really, really good deal if you are starting the season with no V-Bucks and, and you want the new Battle Pass, because the new Battle Pass is, what, £6.50? So for an extra three pound fifty, getting skins, a thousand V bucks, and the battle pass, and then you don't pay the month after. See, I would say <clears throat> if you pay the nine ninety nine and you get the battle pass, you you unlock it and you start going. I, I could see you keep the battle pass. The thing I'm not sure about though is, say if you if you get it for this month, and this month's exclusive skin is that Galaxia outfit. Um, which I'll bring back on screen. So the Galaxia outfit and the Fractured World back bling uh, and the Llamacorn um, pickaxe. Okay, you get those. Is it like PS Plus? So if my subscription ends, do I lose that until I become part of the Battle Pass, uh, the uh, the crew again? Or do yeah. I get that and keep that? Um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is an interesting um, conversation. I mean, it... it 
kind of depends on whether you're going to play Fortnite, if you're interested in Fortnite. If you're not interested in Fortnite, then it's probably just going to, oh, all right, okay. But looking at it ob uh, objectively in terms of forgetting away the fact that I'm, I'm probably not going to play Fortnite consistently, so this doesn't really apply to me. The fact that it's $9.99 a month, um, you do get new skins, exclusive skins as well. I mean, this is, let's let's look at it from the perspective of, well, from my, my household's perspective. I don't play Fortnite much, but Chloe, she's mm -hmm. 11. She plays it all the time. She always wants new skins, and she always wants skins that other people don't have. So if she has access to the crew skins that other people don't have, then that gives her a little bit of playground uh, bravado, not that she's, 11 years old she's in high school they don't all hang around on the playground anymore like they did when they were uh in previous school but it's that sort of bragging rights with it and the fact that it comes with a thousand v books as well chloe wants to buy skins occasionally so we say okay you can, you can do as long as you use your money or you do jobs in return for them so we build a sort of price in with that this kind of that kind of thing would work. Nine ninety nine a month for a set subscription, where she gets the battle passes included. She gets uh, the V bucks uh, monthly. She gets new outfits in return for for that. Doing chores or whatever in the house. That, that see, I, I think that's that's a pretty decent package because you can spend nine ninety nine on V bucks without even thinking about it one month, and then four weeks later it could be oh that was ages ago when I bought the V bucks. So I'll, I'll spend more. On v books so i think it's not a bad deal all, all in all if i'm if i'm honest in my opinion what are your thoughts yeah i mean this is a this is, i don't think this is aimed at people like me and you who will just grind out to level 100 and then probably wait till the next season and that's based off of two seasons out of about 14 that we've participated in this is obviously aimed at people who will be uh playing the game religiously who are level 248 who want the ability to be able to have free skins and free like a, th a thousand V bucks is a lot, um, especially if it's just for one skin or a new bit, a bit a piece of back bling or enough just to be able to cover. Like just paying for this once will get you a thousand V bucks, and then you don't have to worry about it the next season pass because the season pass is eight hundred and fifty V bucks, I think. Nine fifty. Um, Nine fifty. So you've already paid, in one month you've already paid for the next one as well as got a load of other shit as well. Uh, this absolutely isn't aimed at us, but it's a decent enough deal if you wanted to play it or you do play it full time. If this is the only game that you play, like if this deal was in PUBG, for instance, change the game but keep the farm, is this something that you'd be looking to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think because <clears throat> I put money into PUBG to get certain skins. Uh, I put money into PUBG to get season passes. And that was kind of like one of my comments a little bit earlier on in terms of i like the way that fortnite funds the next season pass and keeps you in the game and it's meant to be your enjoyment of the game that makes you spend the money um and pubg initially with the season passes did that you used to get enough g coin as you went through i don't know if it fully funded the next one maybe it did i can't remember um but that's something that's happening this time. Like in season nine, <laughs> I think it is. You get you get enough coins, uh, G coin as they call it, to pay for the next PUBG season pass uh, or battle pass or, or whatever the pass it's called. These I always get more mixed up. But um, I I love that idea because that keeps me playing. That keeps me um in the game. That that stops audience drop off. That's good for for audience retention in terms of okay i know that if i play this i can grind to the next bit which unlocks the next season pass even if even if i'm finding the content in this season a bit of a chore like Fortnite for me for example i'm finding it a little bit of a chore now the grinding bit but i'm doing it because i want to get iron man it could be a case of i'm doing it so i make sure i get the g coin to buy my next pass which when it might not be a chore so that kind of stuff i love the idea of that and Fortnite, i've done that all the way through anyway um PUBG doing that more recently hopefully that's something that continues but it's the fact that you do get extra currency in it as well so it's not just a case of you getting the pass you get the pass plus an extra thousand so you get a pass plus you can spend on something to show your personality be that a skin be that a pickaxe be that emote or something um using PUBG as an example i have Hundreds of thousands of BP, which I earn every game, and have nothing to spend that on. Nothing. There's nothing, apart from some horrible blue skins that I'm never going to use, uh, there's nothing in the store now that that, uh, that I can spend it on, apart from loot boxes, which I'm it's just a waste of money. Uh, even though it's not money that I have and I can't use it, it's still a waste, so I'd rather just leave it sit there. Um, 
The only way I can get anything is by getting G-Coin, which is money, which I don't really get extra from the Battle Pass, but this does give that. So if PUBG had something where I could get G-Coin and my Season Passes and uh, give me more reason to play at a set rate that's a better rate than just buying it off the store, I'm going to spend the money anyway. Now I can get better value for money and con uh, commit to doing it. I'd be all over that because uh, it would work out better for me in the long run. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would do that. I would do that. Um... Gary says, those sponges are magic, but not magic enough to change my digital edition manual to so the standard version manuals like they should be. Thanks, Sonic. The kids are crying. <laughs> nice one. Kids it's crying. So weird, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there, was a, there was a lot of instances of people getting uh, that have ordered the, the, the standard version and then getting the digital version instead in the box. That's an absolute W. I didn't actually see that manual. I think I had two of the like the quick start manual, but I, I was I was rushing pretty much not paying attention because yeah, it's once you've set up one console, uh, you kind of know what the next one is. So I never really look at manuals, and the fact that we've set up thousands of consoles at events over the years, <laughs> yeah, I could I could set up a console with my eyes closed. <laughs> so I don't even I didn't really look. I mean, I know you could as well, obviously, Gary. But but yeah, yeah. But we had to at the at the uh, the sniper ghost warrior one. That room was dark as shit. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put the put the wiring behind the PC tower. That was interesting. Yeah, probably not the greatest idea in the world to like put so long stop. Uh, we did a launch event for Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts um, at an, a prison, an abandoned prison in the UK, and we had a room that we'd set uh, dressed to be like a, a military bunker with PCs and everything inside so that people can sit down, play the game, capture and, and leave. Um, and we did that. We put the PCs in after we set dressed the room, which is probably the right decision because set dressing the room is the difficult bit. There's bits moving around. You could probably knock over PCs and smash it. However, the room was bright and vibrant with all the windows in the world. By the time we finished set uh, set dressing it, it was dark and you couldn't really see anything. So yeah, that wasn't it was, oh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But there you go, there you go. Um, oh, there's the cat. The cat's back. Yeah. Uh, um. So, jumping back in, uh, Steelbonds, I says, my son was saying something about this. Need more info, confused.com. My, my lad loves the game. Yet, my lad must have easily 200 skins, etc. I dread think how much money and pocket money has gone onto this mm -hmm. game. And yes, he earns it through hard work at school or chores at home or our family or birthdays, etc. Uh, my lad's level is 261. Um, uh, 261, 265, most passes he gets above 200. I think not last season, but the one before was over level 300 and got gold skins and helped him do the challenges. Um, so that's the thing. I mean, I was playing online with PUBG, uh, with PUBG, with Chloe on Fortnite the other day. Um, she's like level 100 and something as well. Um, but she's kind of like that. She she probably would be similar in terms of level. She just spends a lot of time in creative now. Once she, once she kind of like hits level 100, her and her mates just goes doing like 1v1s. It's the equivalent of 1v1 on Rust. 1v1 me on Rust. <laughs> That's it. It's 1v1 me in creative kind of thing. So she spends a lot of time in creative now, which obviously doesn't add to the level. But, but yeah, there's, there's definitely... Um, that same sort of element. She asks, "Can I spend some of my birthday money or, po uh, or pocket money or whatever?" Um, and sometimes we'll say yes. Sometimes we go no. If you want to spend that money, you have to earn it. We'll happily get you that skin that's just been added to the store um, or that emote. It's usually the emotes, the renegade dance, and things like that. Yeah, we'll happily get you things like that, but you've got to do the backing or empty the dishwasher or, or things like that for the week, uh, and then you can have it. Oh, okay, I don't want this skin that much now. Well, I mean, yeah. it's just is what it is. It just is what it is. Um, I'm the same with PUBG. I have over two hundred thousand, but I don't use it. I'm I'm on that that threshold. I think I've just gone below it because I keep re-rolling my daily missions. Um, so obviously, when you do your daily missions, you can re-roll for more, but it costs you fifteen hundred. And I've been obviously doing that the last few days, which I'm at about one hundred ninety-nine thousand now, one hundred ninety-eight thousand in that vicinity. But yeah, mm. um, I spent I spent a fair bit on buying the skins using G Coin, but I try uh, and buy the more rarer items. Um, yeah, I I. I've bought a few bits, so I bought the um, the PCS pack this time, and I bought a few different uh, streamer skins and things like that. Um, which I mean, I've got no issue with that. I've got I've got no issue buying uh, buying bits as I go. Um, it's just a shame that there's nothing free alongside it to buy. Two hundred thousand currency, which I've built up over years of playing it on console, and there's just nothing to spend that on. That's that's the bit that's that's just a bit like. Eh? Why not? Uh, or, or even like some exorbitant like exchange rate. If you've got 200,000 BP, why can't I change that into 1,000 mm. G coin or something like that? I know that it maybe that's not the right economic conversion because economics, like people being able to suddenly convert BP into G coin suddenly takes out all profit for the for the company for a month while everyone converts it. I get, I get that sort of thing. But just putting more 
simple um, and not it's a harsh word i don't mean this word but lazy skins lazy is not the word i mean but but you look at the quality of some of the uh, g coin skins and then you look at the ones that are bp skins and it's like just a bl riptide is the name of it it's just basically a blue uh skin and then you've got like some really cool nice stuff alongside it for g coin and it it just it's yeah it 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 feels like it's forgotten the bp feels like it's been forgotten in that sort of sense um uh that's not the first time graham has been in a dark room in prison <laughs> hey uh, need a cat cam says yes that's true we do we do that's what your second camera can be you can just switch that to cat cam <laughs> um uh stupid fortnite says west <laughs> stupid sexy fortnite uh, I'm, I'm i'm when i say super sexy fortnite i'm hearing that in homer's voice when he says stupid sexy fortnite, yeah. by the way uh uh morning folks morning west morning west uh yeah my lad plays that mode with his mates uh, uh west what a lovely chap uh debatable Debatable. How did you get on yesterday, by the way, West? I know that you weren't streaming because it was... Was it Agrobeard's birthday? I can't remember whose birthday it was. Um, but you were doing some birthday content. Anyway, it was a busy-ish day for me, so I didn't have any Twitch on after our stream yesterday, so I didn't catch any of it, but hopefully it all went good. Um, we need to team up on Fortnite, West. I'm so crap, says LaRoche. Join, join <laughs> me! Join me, me and Bib. <laughs> we'll all jump in. We need the help. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, eat, I mean, we might all lose... But we get the squad sort of like bonuses. So, yeah, do you know what? We might take things yeah. off together. It's fine. Um, All about the XP. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Bacon Chin says, have a good rest of the stream, boys. Offer an interview in the eSports. Oof. Well, hopefully the eSports are kind. And uh, and see what a lovely person you are. Thank you very much, Bacon Chin, for being here. And for dropping the sub. Uh, and I hope the interview goes exceptionally well. GG's. Best of luck, dude. Um, Wes has played it one night before PUBG uh, came out. Uh, Rosh, I will never play it again. <laughs> It's a very, very different game. And the worst thing is, is like I, I tend to do my PUBG dailies because I, I value those a bit more that get into level 50 in the uh, Battle Pass and then I'll jump onto Fortnite, which is which is furious as, uh, infuriating as fuck because in PUBG, crouch is circle or B on the Xbox controller, I think it is. Um, but when you're on Fortnite, circle is build. So if you're in the middle of a fight and, and someone's in front of you and you want to crouch down behind a rock, I end up just whipping out my, my pen and paper and be stood there like, like getting headshot. <laughs> Fuck, no, wrong button, yeah. crouch, crouch, stick. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, pounding headache all day, lack of sleep, but I had great fun. Uh, well, I was going to say nice, but I meant that for the fun, not for the headache. Uh, get yourself some eggs with a bit of ketchup, just drizzled across it. Yeah, yeah, nice. I got you, I got you. Uh, looks like I'm playing with you, boys. Yeah, yes, the more the merrier, the more the merrier. Uh, Steel Bonsai says, I've actually won a couple of games of Fortnite. PUBG is easy compared to Fortnite. Um, I still think PUBG is PUBG's harder one-on-one -on -one in, in fights. But it's, PUBG is easier in the fact that, you know, if you're having a shootout with someone, they're not just going to erect the Taj Mahal on top of you. And yeah. then suddenly, yeah. It, like, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm there with, like, like stickle bricks sticking them together, like, boop, boop. Boop, a stick! And they're like, Empire State Building! Oh, fuck! Well, I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, so, it, yeah, yeah. it always makes me laugh on Fortnite, though, where you, you go to shoot someone, and as soon as they, as soon as you land a shot, you think, I've got this guy. This guy is mine. Within a couple of milliseconds, they have built the biggest thing around you. think, oh, shit, turn around, run off. Because <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't dealing with that. If they're building faster than I can even pull the trigger on a gun, I'm not engaging in that. I absolutely sweat loaded. I went to so in the game now. There's a lot of areas that are dedicated to Marvel characters because it's the Marvel uh, bit, and there's a place called Doom's Domain where Doctor Doom lives, and he has like an underground bunker where there's a vault. Um, and I went down into the vault to kill some of the Doom's henchmen, which are the NPCs in in the game. And as I was killing them, and I heard like a big shootout above, and I knew that someone would be coming down with a key card to get into the vault. So I, like an absolute sweat lord, thought, well, I'm just going to sit here in this corner with eyes on the vault door, wait until someone comes up. I've just found the purple LMG, so I can just go, Brah! it's like M249 yeah. from, from PUBG, but without the recoil. This person's just going to get melted. Watch this person come strolling up to the door, start to do the key card thing. I pull the trigger like I'm pretty much high fiving myself as I'm pulling the trigger because this has worked. Anyway, hit the guy for about seventy damage. He instantly turns around. Wall ramp, three more walls, concrete, metal, steel, and I'm and they're like, uh, okay, I'm out of tactics now. Just keep shooting. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely trashed me. Absolutely trashed me. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good at that game. PUBG, 
See, PUBG, that, that, it'll be dead. TTK on PUBG, much better. Just dead. Get out of here. <laughs> um, uh, I played Fortnite a lot when it first came out. Uh... And was pretty good, but now I get owned by nine-year-olds. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I had a story. I mean, I've, I've told it before. I'll tell it again. I had a story where when I first played, like me and Chloe played PUBG. We streamed PUBG together. Um, she used to watch me play PUBG loads. And then when a, a mates at school started playing games, she, she'd left me and deserted me for Fortnite. Ooh, um, but um, I'd play PUBG with her, and she was very much like like her her character in game was the slow looking down at the floor and, and slow looting kind of thing that you'd expect from someone that's not very good at video games. So when we played Fortnite, um, this was fairly early in her Fortnite life. It was last year for the uh, Star wars -y kind of time, I think it was. Um, and we got down to a 2v2, me and Chloe versus another team. I uh, downed one person. Um, the other person on that team downed Chloe. So it was a 1v1 with two people down in the circle. And it, I'm like, I'm there like full on sweating at this point thinking, absolute dad test. I have to win this. If not, I'm that dad that nearly won a game for Chloe. Anyway, I did. Uh, like clutched it, shotgun, spinning 360, no scope to the head. Bow! Get out. Yeah, that's it. I'm dad of the dad of the day. Yes. Not That's never going to happen now. I, I go in and I'm the kid that's like looking around like, what is this gun? <laughs> what's, what's, what's an SMG? Meanwhile, Chloe's there, well, like full on uh, Taj Mahal, Empire State Building stuff alongside a kill. I've just killed three people, Dad. Do you want all their loot? She's there running around with a white SMG so I can have all the better loot so I stand a better chance of surviving. And it's like, oh, <laughs> it's, I've devolved from being super dad to special kid. <laughs> just, no, no. Uh, but there you go. Eggs and ketchup, says Danny Day 83. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um... Poor kids. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, chat. Oh, there we go. Uh, Star Wars on Fortnite. I'm in, says Gagad. Yes, the Mandalorian. Um, and Baby Yoda potentially are going to be in Fortnite. And we're just talking about the uh, the crew stuff that's in the game as well. So, I mean, Fortnite does have a bit of a rep for being a game for 12-year-olds, which is understandable with the art style and, and the content and so on. But it is, it, it is such a good game in terms of... Um, for me, it's a good game in terms of it's something I will enjoy heavily for a short period of time, and then I'll leave it until next Christmas. <laughs> and then I'll enjoy yeah. it heavily again until next Christmas, uh, kind of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's something I will play in stints. It's not my all-the-time game like a PUBG would be, but it's definitely a, a game that I can pick up and play. Um, I'd probably play Fortnite if it wasn't for the building. Do you know what? That's, that's kind of it for me, uh, Daniel. I'd say this all the time. I... I like a shootout. I mean, the building is what makes Fortnite Fortnite, um, which we all know anyway. Uh, but that's what separates it. But that's also what is the downfall for me, in my perspective. That's where the skill gap is, but that's not where I want to increase my skills. I don't want to learn the button combinations of building walls and spinning. And, and I want to learn the button combinations so I can just whip out a perfect uh, peak headshot or a 360 no scope kind of thing. That's where I want my skill gap to be. So it is a really good variation, but it's not the variation that I'm interested in. Not long-term anyway. I went to uh, Tony Stark's home. Big mistake. Got smashed by NPCs in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that feel. No, that feel. Uh, I'd play Fortnite if they removed the building, added the PUBG maps and guns, removed everything to be Fortnite and used the PUBG mechanics. <laughs> seems, seems good. Seems uh, good. <laughs> Cat butt. <laughs> no, that's that's Bibber. Yeah, that's Bibber. Um, yeah, she's like, she's back in her bed now. She's had enough strokes. <laughs> uh, West says never eggs and ketchup. Danny Day. Graham is broken. <laughs> what? What? Egg, uh, eggs and ketchup is 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 the minimum. Anyone that doesn't understand that, I mean, we are actually talking about eggs and ketchup last night, uh, West, in terms of Danielle will have ketchup on some eggs, but not others. So fried eggs, she'll never have ketchup on it. Um, uh, but like scrambled eggs and omelettes and things, she would have. Uh, whereas I'm just like, all but boiled. Give me, give me the ketchup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, James says, honestly, it's annoying as I'm rubbish at building, but it adds an interesting element to the game. I tried it. I have nephews and niece, just not for me. Which is understandable. That's, I think that's kind of, I, I like it in in bursts um i respect fortnite but it's not for me i would rather not game uh than play it if i'm honest the builder puts me on fortnite i just want to shoot man's in it bro <laughs> yeah. Yeah. exactly blad <laughs> exactly uh no that's pretty much me ketchup on all eggs that's the right way i mean when we say all do you mean boiled because because we need to we need to address this boiled with a bit of salt bosh Stick that on a, on, a, on a butter, yes, please. Maybe a bit of mayo. Oh, we'll have some egg mayo. Yeah, we'll have this. Ketchup doesn't go in that sort of situation. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is our chat. <laughs> Exclamation mark W doesn't work in here. Yeah. Um, the game itself looks uh, looks great for what it is. I mean, it is. It's really good. It's really well polished. They've done a really good job. That all of the matchmaking, all the functions and stuff work. It's just obviously like any other game. If it doesn't float your boat, then it's not for you. If it doesn't bake your cake, it's not for you. Um, good job on no mod. Everyone would be banned. <laughs> It's the only reason we're not giving you a sword of power. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, let's move ahead. Uh, we are a good chunk into the stream already. Wow, time's flying. Um, I put that on my 4K TV and 1080p gaming monitor. It looks great on both. Uh, ketchup on French bread slash eggy toast. Uh, oh, yeah. See, I if I have eggy bread um, or eggy toast, I've never heard it being called eggy toast before. Um, if, if we have eggy bread, even though it technically is, no, it's fried, isn't it? Um, but yeah, anyway, if we have a good bread, I wouldn't have ketchup on that. Just just salt on that. Um, and French bread, because that's sweeter, I wouldn't put ketchup on that either. Um, I wouldn't be against it. I'd probably try it and I'd probably like it, but I, I, I don't think I'd need it. Um, fried eggs demands ketchup, especially on a bacon and egg butter. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, except me, West, as I'm one of you uh, on your shit list. Uh, are you on the shit list? Or are you not on the shit list? <laughs> You're always safe. French toast slash eggy bread. There we go. French bread slash eggy toast. There we go. My brain couldn't compute. <laughs> uh, yes, there we go. Got We, we got there. We got there. Uh, Graham has ketchup on ketchup. Uh, see, I, I actually don't have that much ketchup, to be fair. Danielle has the ketchup. Uh, I used to only be a ketchup man. If I got chips, ketchup. I got a burger, ketchup. I got sausages, ketchup. Um, if I have sausages now, ketchup. If I have a burger... Ketchup and mayo. Maybe a bit of barbecue as well. I don't know. Bacon is for sure. If I have chips now, I'm now a mayo person. Uh, I didn't used to eat mayo until five years ago-ish. Now it's my, my, my condiment of choice. So chips, mayo, bosh. Um, uh, not on. <laughs> ah, there you go. Not a bloody fight. I get you. Yeah, so you're not on the shit list. That's fine. It's fine. We can fix that. We can fix that. <laughs> uh, anyway, as mentioned, we will jump into the next bit of news. Um... Which should be on the screen now. There we go. Andy Robinson at BGC says, Red Dead Online will be available as a standalone $4.99 released next week. Standalone version will require up to 123 gig of storage. So about one-fifth of COD Black Ops uh, Cold War. Uh, with story mode available separately. Rockstar has confirmed it will launch a standalone version of Red Dead Online on consoles and PC next week set for release on december the 1st red dead online will initially be available for 4.99 which is down from 19.99 uh, from the playstation store microsoft store rockstar games launcher epic games store and steam for the first time new players who don't already own red dead, uh, red dead redemption 2 will be able to experience all of the games online offering without purchasing the full game rockstar said the standalone version will require up to 123 gig of disk space. Hey, Mr. Thario Drake, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Um, I will jump back into where I was. There we go. The standalone version will require up to 123 gigabytes of disk space and will also include the option to unlock Red, De Red Dead Redemption 2 story mode via a separate purchase. Rockstar noted that the PS4 and Xbox One versions of Red Dead Online will be playable via backward compatibility on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X, suggesting that a bespoke next-gen version isn't part of its initial plans. Rockstar previously confirmed plans to bring an expanded and enhanced version of GTA 5 to next-gen consoles in the second half of 2021 one including a standalone version of gta online which will be free to ps5 owners for a limited time the new generation versions of gta 5 will feature a range of technical improvements visual upgrades and performance enhancements to take full advantage of the latest hardware making the game more beautiful and more responsive than ever it said and for the massive and vibrant community of grand theft auto online players worldwide the journey through the ever-evolving shared world, uh, world of gta online will continue on the new generation with more new updates including additional gta online content exclusive to the new consoles and PC. Do you know what we'll stop there? Because that's going more and more into GTA. Whereas the article that we're talking about is about Red Dead Online, available as a standalone element for four dollars and ninety nine. Bib, thoughts? Uh, it's a, it's actually a pretty good deal, and I'm surprised that they are offering this, but also not very surprised at the same time. If they was going to put a monetary value on a game being pe peeled out and put into an online environment as a standalone game, I honestly thought that this would be for Grand Theft Auto. Um, but then again, Grand Theft Auto 
has been on PlayStation Plus, I think, uh, as well as Epic Games Far Free. So I imagine it's probably reached its uh, mass capacity. Um, what, what's the what's the what's the phrase? Saturation. Yes, that's the word we're looking for. Uh, whereas Red Dead Two, I hadn't even bought. I don't even think I played Red Dead Online originally. So this is uh, an an offer that I kind of refuse. Uh, but no, I think for for the sake of five quid, I probably will end up picking it up and giving it a go. Uh, I, I know it's nowhere. Uh, just because of the way and the time that the game has been brought out in, I know <clears> it's <throat> not going to be as fast and frantic as GTA, which could be an absolute benefit because I do think GTA, GTA Online, and this should never, ever, 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 ever go against them. But I think there's just too much to do and I just haven't got the time. I know I could probably dip into this and probably do one or two missions online and then leave. Um, but like the heist and things, it's, I'd lo- absolutely love to spend all my time playing GTA Online. It's just too slow, not just in, ter- uh, in terms of getting into games. It's You spend more time in the menu than you do uh, actually playing the game. For me anyway, playing on my PlayStation 4 at the time. Hopefully that will improve when it comes out on the PlayStation 5 and we get some faster load times with that. But uh, for the sake of £5, it's worth giving it a go. Bits in it, La Roche dropping 100 bits. Uh, definitely too much to do on GTA. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, although I, I'm disappointed in you, La Roche. <laughs> I've, I've literally just fixed the uh, the light in the room. As soon as I fixed it, <laughs> you drop the bits, which breaks it. Yeah. God, how dare you donate your fine bits to the channel? We know, genuinely appreciate it. Thank you very much for the support. Um, uh, uh, lights off. Lights on. There we go. Basically, I have Lumia Stream hooked up to my lights, so every time we get a notification, it, it does look good. So if, so if like, Clary and Drake raiding changed all the lights in the room, it's really cool, but there's no way that Lumia can reset it back to the default, so I have to turn it off and on to bring it back on, uh, just so it goes back to a stationary light setup. So that's, that's what that is. Anyway, enough of the tech stuff. Sorry, but sorry, but no, 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 I'm not joking. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Genuinely, it, we do appreciate the bits. As mentioned, this isn't our full-time job. This is kind of our side piece, so that sort of stuff does allow us to do it more, so genuinely appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Hammer LFC, hey, welcome in, dude. Welcome in. Um, actually, just give me one second. I am gonna kill this call with Bib uh, because the video, my my internet connection, everything is fine, uh, but the video quality just hasn't picked up since it dropped earlier on. So let's kill the call and jump back in. Right. That looks better. That looks better. Whoop. I mean, better is is a subjective phrase, but there we go. There, there we go. It does look better. Um, uh, love it. Maybe do a tech stream sometime if you don't already. I'm fairly new here. Um, we, we've had a few set-up discussions. This is a conversation I've been having. I don't know if show, show. I don't know if Shogun's in the chat. Um, it's something we've been speaking about for a while. So we ha- I have quite a lot of decent tech in this stream that... I, I tend to help a lot of other people with tech uh, knowledge, and it's something we've been speaking about for a while, doing our own sort of technical content. So be it setup streams, we usually have setup streams within other streams. So it's something we've obviously been speaking about. So maybe, maybe we could, maybe we could turn it into YouTube content as well. It'd make nice um, how-to sort of videos or, or uh, setup talks and stuff because we have quite a lot of stuff in here to talk about. But um, uh, yes, what was I saying? Oh, that was it. Red Dead Online standalone. Um. As someone that has Red Dead Redemption 2, I haven't played Red Dead Online. I know we've streamed it on the channel. Lewis streamed it very early on. Um, and then when they added the, uh, like, is it a 16-man Battle Royale kind of thing? He, he did a little bit of that. It just didn't it just didn't resonate with me. GTA Online, I know we spoke about GTA Online yesterday um, and saying how it how it's amazing with the amount of content, the amount of things that are in there, which is also a little bit... Um, like that, that can scare you almost. The, the the barrier for entry is is almost okay. There's so much stuff that I need to do to catch up on everyone else in the game. Not sure if I want to do that. And then when you do go into that game and you've got Alpi just rocketing you every five seconds like Bibad, yeah. uh, um, then yeah, if you're getting absolutely blitzed by everyone as soon as you go into the game, then, ah. so so the online of GTA is something that I never fully got into. I spent most of my time in GTA Online playing one of the custom game modes called is it snipers versus stunters kind of thing where you basically you've got um a runway that has like cars at the end of each side of the runway with ramps and then in the middle is a floating platform where people spawn and then grab snipers so, so the people on the top 
have to snipe the people in the cars and the people in the cars have to fly up on the ramps and knock people over on the top and it's basically whoever's uh or whoever wins so it's either snipers or the stunters um and I, I, it's actually an incredibly fun game but anyway i spent ages playing that that's kind of my my kind of online experience because that was something standalone and separate to everything else it wasn't the sort of chore anyway red dead online is that sort of choriness but i don't know if it for me i don't think it would work as well having cars and having um all of the mod cons of the modern world in gta works a bit better for me than having that but with horse and carts and all of the stuff of red dead red dead is such an immersive atmosphere um i'm not sure that adding other people into that would add to the immersion for me i think that breaks the immersion red dead is more immersive whereas gta is more i don't know it's more spectacular so i think that kind of works it's more of a spectacle rather than immersion if that makes sense does that make sense the racing in gta was amazing it was it, that honestly it probably was one of my favorite racing games and it isn't even a racing game um but the racing on it was so good like maybe not the ones where you uh, where you end up that your car turns into a plane and then into a boat and then back into a plane and then back into a car they annoyed me after a while but just the out and out racing on gta was outstanding absolutely loved it um yeah not only the fact that your car turns into a plane into a into a boat into a plane kind of thing is i mean it sounds like a superman is it a bird is it a plane is it a car is it a five minute loading screen i don't know it sounds like gta online <laughs> uh yeah i mean it's it is a good bargain in terms of 4.99 for the amount of content that you get into it but i'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you've got a next gen version of grand theft auto 5 online coming for free i feel like it's almost is it not the, are you not speaking to the same sort of player in terms of if if you've got gta online the kind of people that would thrive and exist in a gta online environment are red dead online players maybe or is it is it because of the, the content of the game be it be it wild west versus modern day is that a different demographic i'm kind of feeling it even though the content changes the players you're aiming at are still the same gta online is much 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 more uh embedded than red dead online so people i imagine will still keep playing gta online if they have to spend 4.99 for red dead now or wait six months to get gta for free i think a lot of people would just just sit on it and say okay it was 19.99 it's now 4.99 okay that's still 4.99 more than free so I, I, i'm not sure whilst it's a good deal for the amount of content i'm still not sure it would sell very well for me uh say very sell very well i'm talking in rockstar world as well i mean what rockstar uh would call selling not very well would be absolutely incredible for most businesses in the world but still yeah that's the point i'm getting at um uh da -da 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 -da. Uh, am I the only one who, when sees Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, written as RDR2, thinks of R2D2 before Red Dead? Uh, no, no, that, that, yeah, I can, I can relate. Uh, da, 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 where did it, there was, um, Tharion Drake says, I've been working on more art tonight, lads, I'll send you a DM with it later. Nice, nice, I would like to see it. Check out Tharion Drake, by the way. Um, if you want some nice relaxing streams, um, not only does he play games, but he's also an artist, which you can commission to do designs and, and emotes and things like that too. And you can see him do a lot of that stuff on stream as well. So check him out, check him out. Um, Steel Bonsai says, great idea. I want to learn more about all this, especially with streaming and PCs. Well, I, I can absolutely do that because, well, as mentioned, let's flip to the alternate cam. We have quite a lot of bits uh, to talk, <laughs> talk you through. I mean, first of all, this is a PUBG care package. Yeah, nice, nice. This this is my hat collection. Is that not the kind of technical stuff that you're looking for? Yep, yep, nice. They're, they are rested on what we call metal. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, I basically have a four screen mount. So screen one, two, three, and my fourth screen is now just a hat pole because I don't have a fourth screen. So there you go, that's, that's, that's a work in progress. Um, uh, $5 for Red Dead Online. That's red. Uh, uh, for that. That's redemption for those that want it. <laughs> um, yeah, you get you get email receipts uh, saying that you've redeemed your purchase. <laughs> uh, sorry, I I read that out loud. <laughs> Chat, I just looking at me like dead. Eh. Okay, I will stop now. We'll stop now. Uh, don't forget about GTA RPG as well. That's got pretty big. I mean, GTA RPG is class. It, it genuinely is but i see that more as whilst it's whilst it's a gta thing i think that's more the fact that gta unlocks unlocks the world in the same way that 
that Among Us is incredible. It's Among Us is more an enabler. It enables you. My God, what's that? Not all the lights turning on. Good. There we go. Among Us enables you to live your best life, effectively. If you play Among Us, Among Us allows you to show your personality. allows you to interact with other people. Um, so GTA just becomes the vessel for your creativity. I mean, me and Bibby were talking about it last year. Do we um, not necessarily join NoPixel, but do we start our own smaller sort of community server in, in uh, GTA so that we can do our own like RP stuff? Um and I, I'd, I'd already started talking about what sort of character I would go for, and I'd, I had had a um, like a storyline for my character built up in mind. We decided not to do it in the end, but but yeah, it's it's GTA is just a vessel for it. It's it's almost kind of GTA is almost irrelevant. It's more about the RP. The RP just if you're gonna build RP on a game, you might as well do it on one of the most successful games of all time. So so yeah, understandable, understandable. Um, uh, Red Dead RPG is alive and well, is it? I mean, to be fair, I mean that I could see Red Dead RPG. I could see that potentially working better than GTA for the reason that that Red Dead is immersive, whereas GTA is a bit more of a spectacle. And if you want to get immersed in a sport, a storyline, so I, I could imagine that Red Dead could be better for the uh, RP element. Um, so that, that wouldn't surprise me if, if, if Red Dead RP is... I mean, I didn't even know it was a thing until you mentioned it then, but it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Um, uh, commands. Um, LaRoche, that, that commands list is there, but it is very, very out of date. We haven't updated that command list for about a million years. We probably should do. Um, but... but Today is not the day. So there, there is more. <laughs> uh, like, type in exclamation mark smoke if, if you want a reason to uh, not get a PS4 Pro. There you go. Uh, Red Dead Online is great fun, to be fair. Uh, I've only played a little bit of it, but it's a laugh with friends. I imagine that. I imagine that. These games are amazing, but yeah, as you say, they have so much in it that sometimes put, puts you off playing them. I mean, don't get me wrong. Red Dead Redemption is one of my all-time favorite games in terms of single-player story modes. It was incredible. Me and Danielle sat and played that 10 years ago almost night after night after night it's up there with the last of us and that kind of stuff thoroughly enjoyed it in exceptional game it, it, and just i suppose just like the last of us maybe i want those experiences just to be single player so the multiplayer in that element doesn't work for me as well um because maybe the single player sets the bar so high multiplayer require uh, requires other people to play their part in it and and other people can be dicks. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's the downside of it. Um, uh, are your headphones, of course, they're void? Yeah, these ones, I, I usually have Astros on. Uh, my Astros are downstairs plugged into my PS5 at the moment. But these are um, Corsair Void Pro RGBs, um, which are really, really good. Uh, the, the good thing with these is, as opposed to the Astros, because we use A40s, the Astros... You get the benefit of the extra power of the mix amp and the, the availability, availability to fade between voice and chat and so on uh, on the fly using the, the mix amp. These, you don't get that, but you can leave the desk and do whatever you want without uh, a wire in the way. So if we were to do some green screen content that required me to get up out on a seat, I could do that easily with these, but not so much with the uh, um, Astros. But they're good, they're good, they're good. They're good. Is Bibby in his PJs? Bibby's always in his PJs. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, is, I genuinely am. Is, is that actually PJs? Well, my top isn't. It's a Jack. It's a Jack and Jones top, but my, my pajama bottoms absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, I had to go downstairs to go and get my doorbell. Uh, I mean, I absolutely that. I I usually have um, either sweatpants or PJs or something on today. I've actually got jeans on because um, nipping out a bit later on. But but yeah, yeah. Street, streamer hacks. You've got to be comfy when you when you're streaming. Absolutely. Uh, Therian Drake says, I mean, you work from home, freedom is freedom. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. You're lucky I've got pants on, to be fair. Sorry, because I'm on camera. <laughs> uh, Gary says, Bibby's neighbours have just knocked on, asking why there's a chunk of turf on their outside wall. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, I have to I have to show this because I was creasing. You may have you may have um, joined in the stream the other, other day. I think it was last week. Bibby was talking about, he was, he was practising his golf swing in the back garden. And he, he, he hit a divot uh, of grass and lobbed it at his next door neighbor's house. And it was kind of, oh, that's funny. But you kind of left it at that. Anyway, in reality, it's even, it's even funnier than that. So here's Bibby's tweet from yesterday. Um, uh, let's get rid of the discussion now. 
Aya pal, at Boris Johnson, any chance you can reopen the golf course a slightly earlier than planned? Uh, the wife has banned me from practicing my swing in the back garden as I took a divot, cracking swing and connection by the way, and flung it against next door's house. Cheers, Bibby. And there's the image. <laughs> that's the comparisons. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, properly coming up. it's like it's a massive fucking divot that in it. <laughs> it looks like it looks like one of those moss patches that you see growing out of the walls. The neighbours just gonna come out of the house and look up and go, bloody hell, that's grown quick. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, grown. That's that's what it is. Uh, you didn't see the back window though. Like the back window, like not only has it got <laughs> a big divot above <laughs> on the cladding, but the back window just <laughs> had like a mud spray going up into a line towards the divot. <laughs> oh god yeah. Honestly. I'm glad that the window cleaners have come though Like we've got, everyone on the street has the same window cleaner so he's just like what the fuck happened here <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know stood there with a, with a golf club behind his back <laughs> uh, I think uh, the laughing broke it the audio's crackling is it oh no no ok one second let me see make sure yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fuck! I did say it, not fixed it. Uh, I said maybe fixed it. Okay, BRB! Oh, no. I can't. I can't. I can't today. I can't. I can't. I can't sing. Oh, is that the doorbell I can hear? Still an angel. It contemplates my faith. <laughs> but do they know? <laughs> this is where we go. <laughs> where we ginger and fat. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that rendition. Uh, so there you, there you go. Audio's fixed. Audio's fixed. Nice, nice, nice. Um... Uh, where do we get to? Um, yes, the team did uh, they did the five M custom server thing. You've also made a red M custom server. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, exclamation mark chair. GT Mega. Nice. Uh, use code ICU at checkout. As it does say there. Uh, Danny Day says so good. I'm assuming that's Red Dead Redemption Two, babe. It's been a while since. Uh, oh, not listening. <laughs> I mean, it could, it could be, it could be. Uh, yeah, true. Other people can be dicks. Just look at Gary Clark. Love you, Gary. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Savage, proper Robbie. <laughs> Loving the lounge pants. Um, I was laughing so hard last night when I saw that tweet from being fucking legend. <laughs> That's why I, I was showing it to Danielle last night. I was like, say he mentioned this the other day, but I didn't think it was going to look like this. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Easy Tiger, you, your sound has gone garbled, voices are all for it. Appreciate it, should be fixed, should be fixed. I remember me and my pal would play golf in the park and one time he hit the ball and he hit it straight out through his mum's kitchen window. She lived over the road from the park. Imagine it being your, your own house as well. <laughs> Got it! Well, I've so genuinely, yeah. genuinely been banned from playing golf in the back garden because I have taken a divot and it's not even small ones. Like, fair enough, I lost that one, but I continue playing. Um, but it's just the back garden's an absolute fucking mess. To be fair, I mean, I mean, it sounded like the garden was uneven, so you just you just a couple of bumps that needed to take. Yeah, it's, it's a good service you've been doing there. La Roche, thank oh, you look, very much for the tier one sub as well. Much appreciated, dude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I so, bought, I've got proper golf balls. Obviously, these are the, the PGA Tour ones. Again, thank you, Asim. But I bought foam ones so I can belt them at the back of the house. Absolutely no problem. No damage to be done anywhere. Can't buy anything. That stops Famous last words. From being, yeah. <laughs> no, dam no damage to be done anyway. Famous last words. We will see. We will see. Um, um, I'm banned now, so it don't matter. <laughs> Danielle says, this, is this a new segment? Uh, it's actually the, the third, uh, third rendition of uh, uh, Bibby Singstar. Um, Bibby song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can work on that and get that prepped for the next time. For now, though, I'll jump into our last couple of article articles because we need to uh, get set on wrapping things up. Oh, as I've done that. Obviously, because I've restarted Streamlabs, I need to do that. There we go. Uh, so this one is written by Tom Ivan at VGC, and it says, Xbox says pre-order models are outdated, and it's considering a deposit system. Finally, Phil Spencer wants to give customers more clarity about when they'll get products. Head of uh, Xbox, Phil Spencer, has said he believes current console pre-order models are outdated, and Microsoft is exploring 
uh, ways to improve them. Speaking in a new interview with The Verge, the exec reiterated recent Microsoft comments that the Xbox Series X and S shortages are expected to continue until April 2021 and suggested the firm could come up with a new model for pre-ordering consoles, such as putting down a deposit. Previously, Microsoft has opened pre-orders six to eight weeks before a product launch and told retailers what percentage of hardware allocation it wants them to make available for pre-order. This leaves remaining percentage available to purchase at launch. In a bid to make the pre-order process less frustrating, Spencer said Microsoft has discussed giving customers the chance to put a deposit down and reserve a console with a guaranteed delivery date. We've had real discussions internally about it. Should I be able to reserve my slots? I'll put some money down. I know my machine's getting built January 20th and I'll get it on February 1st, he said. We have customers that would do that today, he added. Uh, he added, uh, we want people to feel like there's some consoles to go buy and it's not just the day where everybody gets to go pick up their console. I don't know if that's the right decision in today's world. That's very old world thinking. People are going to line up outside of a store, kind of last decade thinking. I think we should challenge ourselves on that. Is that really the supply chain through customers? Uh, that we're talking about that is a reality um, we talked to our retail partners about this as well Spencer went on to state that he believed that Microsoft and Sony lamented how pre-orders had gone for their next-gen consoles and the many upset customers they have struggling to obtain hardware I do think it's going to push us uh, to think about new models he explained it could be reserve your slot it could be doing things more direct with the customer still uh, uh, still could have the retailer fulfill the order but just so people can have more clarity on when they'll get a console it's something we're working on Xbox Series X and S and PS5 pre-orders went live in September and initial stock was quickly snapped up leaving many fans unable to secure one of the new consoles for this month's launches. Spencer reiterated that current supply issues would probably continue into the spring, uh, maybe not as tight as it is now but demand is just really high. Um, he added the biggest disappointment for me in this launch uh, but I'm also happy with it is people love the products. Uh, uh, okay I I'm going to have to just read that again because it sounds like a ball, uh, balls out. He added, uh, the biggest disappointment for me in this launch, but I'm also happy with it, is people love the product. Uh, the demand is high, uh, RK, such as that when you're going to see a product hit the shelf, it goes very quickly. If you want one, uh, I sound like a salesman now, but I'd recommend picking one up when you see it. Um... Xbox Series X and S and PS5 shortages are believed to have been exacerbated by scalper groups using software to automatically buy consoles as they come in stock before selling them at extortionate prices on marketplaces like eBay. Walmart selling limited quantities of new consoles. Okay, well, we can stop there. We can stop there. Is that... Uh... Uh, I thought that might have been the article that Gary sent through to us yesterday. I just want to uh, shout out... Big, big shout out to Gary Clark as well, who did... Um, uh, share an article with us yesterday. Um, we don't necessarily need to jump into that article, but we can take the, the headline from it. A scalper group has taken credit uh, for securing 3,500 PS5 purchases. So this is basically a Discord, a community of people that have chipped in together, and they're charging access to this Discord. If you want to get access to the Discord and get access to the bots and so on that they run and give all the notifications in this Discord, you can pay anywhere between, I think it was like 19 to 250 quid or whatever it is, to get priority, uh, priority access to consoles. These people are paying 20 quid to get notified when consoles come in. So they can buy that console for 400 quid and sell it for 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 1,000, yeah. 1,500 quid. So that is why you can't get a console because three and a half thousand consoles at least have been um, picked up by one scalping group. That is horrendous. That is horrendous. So if you've seen all these people on Facebook that are selling PS5s for seven, eight hundred quid, that is someone that has gone out of his way to rip you off. Um, he wants to make a profit. I mean, it's not even like it's a supply chain. You look at game. Game goes through all the effort of printing, marketing. Um, Game goes through the all, all, all the effort of building brick and mortar stores or renting stores, hiring staff, uh, going through all of the POS stuff, all of the sales training, uh, getting up all of the finance systems and stuff in place. Uh, they sell that product to anyone that's going to buy it. Uh, not that I think that that's uh, perfect in itself, but they sell it. Some guy then just goes in, buys it, and then capitalizes on all of the hard work done by those to charge you twice as much then to get all of it. It's horrendous that it exists. But it's nice to see Xbox... Um, looking at how they can fix that going forward so that less people can scalp. I mean, I'm not sure putting a deposit system will fix it entirely because if I have to put 50 quid down to get my PS5, um, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to pay for that 50 quid anyway to get it. So, okay, I will 
I will still put 50 quid down five times to get my PS5 because I'm going to sell it for five times the price. So it doesn't matter. So, yeah, it might it might put some of the lower level scalpers off. But if you've got one group that's charging people access to the bots and they're making three and a half thousand console sales in this one group, then I don't think a deposit is going to be enough. It needs to be something like a deposit system combined with smarter web tech that can squash any form of bots like bots are easily programmable but they're also easily circumvented if done correctly and that, that's the issue is, is there's not enough of that because and that's where i come back to game game have put all the effort in to sell you game sell you consoles game don't care who they sell to they need to buy a thousand consoles and sell a thousand consoles once they've sold their consoles that's their hands done with it that's it we've made the profit we've done what we needed to they aren't bothered especially game who are struggling which has been well documented over the last few years they're going to sell whatever they need to to stay in business yeah um so they're not going to be bothered if you're coming in buying i mean they will put some restrictions like it's oh you can only get two per customer or something like that yeah but you can go out and come back in again or you can get someone else from the same house using a different card to order the same stuff as well to the same address they're not bothered they've, they've put some uh due diligence in not enough but yeah i think we kind of need more from if, if xbox and co are get, getting involved at the start that will put more pressure onto the games and the curries and the pc worlds and whoever's out there to put more more into their customers because if it they value you as a customer but not enough to properly look after you okay well, we'll do some stuff to make it fine but not enough to make sure that we have our own systems in place to circumvent these these people because in the end Thank you for the other people cream. that are scalping are also customers and they want their business too so yeah gg's xbox uh it's it's it's, it's definitely when we're in the year 2020 we can put men on the moon we can do all this stuff, but we can't make it so that when a console comes out, you can pre-order it without someone else pre-ordering all of them before you. Uh, and that's something that needs fixing. For sure. Uh, oh, the chat has popped quite a bit. You can tell we're onto something a bit spicy. Um, uh, we need a Graham and Bibby album. They'll be the Northern Jedward. <laughs> oh, no. uh, what, what, what would our name be? Uh, I mean... Bibbum. <laughs> Gribbe. <laughs> Gribbe. <laughs> uh, uh, the Bib and Grib connection, as I said it before. Uh, yeah, yeah. the deposit system is better, but scalpers make so much money that putting down a deposit won't scare them off. Exactly, exactly. Uh, if they have to put down £100 for a £500 console, they will, as they know they'll sell it for 1000 says Gary. I, I agree. I completely agree. And that's the thing. If, if someone is putting money into a bot, uh, discord ads thank you very much for the host by the way um if someone is putting money into a discord they're already putting money down that's a deposit that for them isn't a deposit that's an investment they're putting that money in to know that they're going to make money back if they're willing to spend money on a discord they'll be even more willing to just put money into something that's coming back to them the money into discord is lost the money as a deposit is returned so yeah i agree it's 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 start something but it's not enough yet um, this comes down to the point that i made probably two weeks ago now when i was building up to it there needs to be a way if 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 xbox and playstation and whoever it is that wants to make a new console nintendo i don't know if fucking sega wants to get back into it and they are that adamant that they don't want these to go to scalpers then they need to work with the shops that are going to be selling the items now it's something that i mentioned two weeks ago maybe that on the xbox website you can put in your details you can pay a you can pay a deposit of I don't know up to hundred quid because obviously if the console's five hundred quid you're going to have that money lying around for day one, so you can put you put deposit down. Um, but there's a drop down list that comes from uh, all the participating stores in your area. So mine would be Game Crown Point in Denton, uh, for instance. That would be where I would go to pick up my console if I wanted it. They would be allocated a certain amount, so there would be a queuing system on the website. Or uh, you get an information from Game to say, okay, you're going to have your stock in on the day of launch, and then someone two days later can sign up to the website, and it'll say, right, you can pick yours up maybe the day after launch because we've run out of our uh, we've run out of our allocation for that day. So people will still be able to get their console. Because the re reason why people are trying to scalp for this much is because people want to try and get them day one or the threat of not having them for months. If you can eliminate that threat of not having them for months and maybe a day after, people will keep £400 in their back pocket uh, on top of what it is that they would have been spending for the scalping console. So I think having the ability to talk to the stores that are going to be taking your console and selling them, cutting out in the middle, man, 
and having the deposit registered for the store that you're going to be picking up for will then give the best experience, surely. Because I know then I will be getting that console on the day of launch or the day after launch. So the fear of me missing out has been completely eradicated and I know that I'll be saving about £400 because I won't be paying any scalpers for the fear of missing out. Yeah, FOMO is, is the biggest thing. Um, especially social media ex exacerbates it as well. The need suddenly becomes so much stronger. Fuck, I need to get it. But also the need is then duplicated if you're a parent and your kid is, yeah. has got FOMO and you've got FOMO in terms of, not FOMO, fear of missing out, you've got fear of being a shit parent by missing out. It just gets even worse. And that's where you get into these situations where people pay stupid money, which is a good point. Where was Tito's comment? Uh, there we go. Curry, no, 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 it wasn't that one. It's a bit further up, actually. It was regarding some that I've seen Arms post. Um, eBay have an empty PS5 box currently at 1,550 quid. Exactly. And that's... Fucking hell. I'll that's your mind on there. That's people that just aren't paying attention. Um... It happened with the PS4. Someone bought a PS5 box, a PS4 box, and it, and people the way it was phrased makes people think almost oh it's PS5 in a box. Whereas this one is much more obvious. PS5 box only, uh, kind of something like that. But people are reading it. It's like oh PS5 in the box. Yeah, I love that. People aren't paying attention and just spending fifteen hundred quid. They have no right to return that because when that turns up, yeah. it, it'll probably say in in the article sold as seen. This is a PS5 box, no console, uh, co packaging only. Uh, yeah, no returns, no refunds. And if people purchase that and think, oh, okay, there's no console in it, it's like, well, you, you need to read it. You need to read it. But this whole situation comes as a result of the scalping. That isn't scalping. That is someone admittedly being shitty, but clever. Taking advantage of people that aren't very clever. Um, is, is yeah. so if you're not reading it and you're not doing your due diligence and you're buying something that clearly says... It's just a box because you think there's a console in it. You've you've let yourself down. I mean, people have taken the mm -hmm. piss. Um, so what's the, the phrase? Fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It's a little bit of shame on both. The fact that you're fooling someone by being blatantly obvious um, and the fact that someone has been fooled, shame on you both in that situation. The fact that you're willing to do that because you know there's a chance that someone might fall over it. Um, but the fact that someone is, is so blissfully unaware i mean i'm saying that it could be someone with with learning difficulties so, someone that doesn't have the greatest uh, ability to read the the intricacies of, of that or it could be someone that doesn't have english as their first language bidding so it's it's shitter it's shitter because there's no i assume there's no pictures of it inside and, and saying uh, a big x through the console or whatever making it blatantly obvious you just buy the packaging but yeah 1550 quid for a box yeah even if the person does have difficulties, why are you paying fifteen hundred? Uh, yeah, for a console I mean that, that's a separate issue. That's that's a stupid issue. That makes that enables scalpers. If you if if you can sell one console for fifteen hundred quid, make eleven hundred quid off that console, why would you <laughs> get a proper job? Sell sell yourself ten twenty consoles. That's you set for six twelve months. Uh, that's it. Fine. I don't I remember that. Remember that year that PS5 came out and I had a year off. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, if you if if you buy it, I understand this pressures and stuff. Um, I have a parent. I understand what it's like to have pressures of buying things uh, for your children, but and yourself because I've got a PS5. Yeah. And she, it clearly hasn't. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just just by doing it, you make it more likely to happen in the future. So just don't do it. Just don't do it. If 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 you have to spend four seven nine, fair enough. That's that's a retail markup. That's that's supply and demand. Fifteen hundred quid is not supply and demand. That is borderline lunacy. That is you letting yourself be subject to someone taking advantage of you. It's as simple as that. And yeah, that's too far. That's too far. Um, Curry's had a good system. I did see this. I did see this. A really good system. Um, I don't know if it was was it Asim that tweeted it initially when we commented on it, but Curry's had a good system. It was listed at two k, so scalper bots wouldn't pick up on it. A code would then be emailed to the buyer to bring it down to retail. Yeah, you basically get told the the console you're buying is two thousand pounds. What the fuck? I'm not buying a two thousand pound console. Yeah, we're gonna send you a bill, uh, an invoice for two thousand pounds, and you can check out, and it'll be two thousand pounds. Okay, I don't want to check out. Also, by the way, here's a discount code for fifteen hundred and fifty pounds, so it only costs you four hundred fifty quid. Oh, okay, that's that's. It's fine then. Um, but yeah, didn't solve the problem, as you said there, but it reduced it. Love that idea. Love that idea. Um, that won't fix it. If that's what everyone's doing, scalpers would find a way around that too. Um, Door. 
got it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. How you find it, uh, Mr. T? I'm guessing you've got uh, slash getting both. Have them switch from Xbox to PS. I think he's got both, right? Um, I think some of the lottery system, like some of the companies do with Jordans, would work. Maybe there's a system they can implement, but it's still going to be hard to stop scalpers a bit. I saw Alana Pierce uh, tweeting about it yesterday, and it was quite funny, actually, because she mentioned something along the lines of, it's shit that, that this is still happening. And someone was like, uh, pff, welcome to the world of scalpers. This has been happening all the time for sneakerheads or whatever. And she responded to this person saying, I think you'll find that I'm actually a sneakerhead. So I've got up at 6.59 in the morning to, to enter... Uh, sales that i hardly ever win um and it is it's, it's a purely outdated system it's a very commercial system it's a, a system that that benefits um people with commercial interests not necessarily consumers and we are the ones that control the power in those systems so the fact that we haven't pushed for those systems to be changed it's it's, it's a i mean i'm saying it like it's easy change the system now because i'm a consumer I mean, you'd hear that all the time on on social media if that was the case. If it was that easy, it's not. But yeah, it's, it's it is bizarre to think we are we're in the year twenty twenty. We put men on the moon and we hold all the power when it comes to consumerism, but yet we we can't control how we consume. Which which is which is bizarre. It is bizarre. Uh, if you pay fifteen hundred for a box, you really need to evaluate your life choices. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, love both consoles. Um, Mr. T, you're not allowed to like both consoles. You pick one or the other. You're not allowed to like both Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, we fought pretty hard to keep the fanboy wars going. Me, Bib, and and PlayStation lover eight four seven two on uh, on Twitter. Uh, I only said eight four seven two because David's number came to mind. But there you go. Uh, how many parents or grandparents have bought it with genuine intentions? Will have been disp- uh, will have disappointed relatives. I just couldn't do it. Uh, my conscience wouldn't allow. Uh, yeah, I exact. Uh, I, I agree. I think we underestimate the amount of rich people who don't want to faff around with pre-order queues and just buy. Off the- I mean, that's true. That's true. Uh, I, I, if you have, if money is not an object, but um, an easy, uh, the faff of getting one. That- then if you could just pay the money for an easy, easy life, if money is no object, then, yeah, that is where it comes from. <clears throat> I said to my son, if and when I do get the new Xbox, he can have my Xbox One X. Uh, I think another big thing that's put me off the new Xbox is the fact, from what I've heard others say, you will also need a top-end TV on it to actually get the most out of the 120 hertz, etc. And for one of those TVs on it, it's probably going to be another grand or more on top. I mean, you can pick up TVs um, that have 120 hertz, um, for reasonable prices obviously you, there are trade-offs so you've got things like tv refresh rates as well as uh, frames um and things like that but i got a really really good quality samsung tv for like 700 quid um uh but i i found a bargain and picked it up on boxing day um from my local richer sounds kind of thing so you can get some yeah it's, i mean it's a good chunk of money i'm not saying 700 quid's nothing um but you can get even cheaper ones than that there will be some sacrifices usually, but yeah, you don't need to spend top end to get the best out of it. Uh, and even even still, if you've got an Xbox Series X playing on a PC that a One X was playing on, or a TV that a One X was playing on, it will still look better anyway by default. I really appreciate this honest chat about parenting and stuff. Uh, well, there you go, there you go. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, the club, the company, uh, End use a lottery system and it's done amazingly well. Um, never even heard of end uh i've had my one x from day one i also bought a 4k tv so if i could get the new console i would love a gaming monitor that gets the most out of it over buying a new tv um everyone remember that 4k uh 120 at 4k currently isn't possible majority of monitors and tvs not through hdmi yeah i mean it was like i was i did a search to see um so i'm using an uh asus pg 258q monitor which is um like 240 4 hertz uh obviously 1080p and i was like okay how much would it cost to get extra hertz at different sizes this monitor is quite expensive it's about a 400 to 500 quid monitor ish um but to go f- to something that has more than 30 uh 60 fps or hertz in a 4k size the price was like one two three grand or something like that. it was stupid so yeah very few will give you everything you want um i was gonna say i didn't know i was involved in the console twitter was if i am i wasn't doing my part as i'm not on twitter <laughs> yeah. i need hcmi 2.1 for that exactly my, my tv i'm not sure it even is hcmi 2.1 it's 4k and i think 60 hertz um but yeah i've got my monitor for that but even then i don't really need 4k at 25 inch um 
Yeah, I swear I did see uh, there is monitors on new LG TV that do have HDMI 2.1. Or is that more? No, there there is there is uh, TVs that have 2.1, um, but it's not necessarily everywhere new tvs will probably have 2.1 tvs that you bought in the last few years might not have uh, a lot of tvs won't have a lot will a lot won't but just yeah it's it's not necessarily needed um these kind of thresholds where you just start pushing it i mean you going beyond 4k to 8k you start to get in, you're getting into the realms of unless you've got like a 70 inch tv it might not be really value for money there's only so many pixels that the eye can can perceive so squashing extra extra little pixels in it, you, you won't notice to it to some extent. But um, yeah, anyway, that's that's a very very deep uh, Samsung QLED series, very good too, uh, going for around thirteen hundred quid. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, LG CX is the one if you're looking for the best set for the new consoles. Loving mine. Asim gets commissioned, by the way, from LG. Just 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 saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, final article uh, because this has turned into a pretty long stream, which is nice, which is nice. Um, but final article of the day. Um, Written by Alex Calvin at VG247. I just want to say, final article of the day, we haven't even had time to talk about the fact that The Last of Us won six Golden Joysticks. Well, Naughty Dog and The Last of Us won six awards at the Golden Joysticks last night. So we'll maybe look at that in tomorrow's stream, run through the Golden Joysticks stuff. But yeah, we're not even touching on that today. Um, But yes, EA explains why FIFA 21 on PC doesn't have PS5 and Xbox Series X features. This is written by Alex Calvin for VG247. It says, PC players won't have the the top-of-the-line version of the football blockbuster this year. The PC version of FIFA 21 doesn't have many of the features found in the PS5 and Xbox Series X and X X and S editions for spec reasons. Speaking to Eurogamer, EA producer Aaron McCarty said that the PC edition is missing these bonuses so that the minimum specs aren't too high. The next generation of the football blockbuster comes with a wealth of additional features which are also coming to PS4 and Xbox One editions, but not PC. You can check out more about these new features right here. There's a link within the article, but we then go into a comment that says, when we looked at what generation to put the PC game on, we looked at our fans and what capabilities they had with the hardware they have, um, McHardy said. And when um, we have that information to understand what the power of the PCs out there, uh, out there in the world are. And when we looked at that, in order to run the Gen 5 game, um, our minimum spec would have been at a spot that would have left a lot of people out in the cold and not being able to play the game. So we made the choice to keep the PC version of the game on the Gen 4 versions of FIFA so that we can open the doors and be inclusive to everybody who wants to play FIFA. Uh, do you know what? I'd, I feel for anyone that has to make these decisions because there's no mm-hmm. way that you can make that decision as EA or any other company without getting a big dollop of shit thrown at you. Yeah. Uh, how, how dare you make the game be crap? I want the best. I'm on PC. My PC's got uh, GTX, uh, no, an RTX 3090 kind of thing. It's sat in it with all of the power in the world, and I've got all the sticks yeah. of the RAMs and the things. But yeah, you have, but not everybody else has. So it's, it's such a difficult thing. Consoles, and and it's like having mobile phones that, that are capable to run certain ecosystems. You know that, that a phone can run that ecosystem. You know it has minimum uh, requirements by default so if you're saying this will work with ios 10 or earlier uh, or later should i say then you know that by default that phone will have these minimum specs so you can work off that pcs isn't necessarily the same thing so it is difficult um i do wonder like if they can get it on a ps4 and uh, an xbox one why they can't get it to work on pc but then again i'm I'm not in those developmental conversations but do you know what yeah. I, I don't imagine that ea would would leave a bunch of stuff out of PC if it was easy for them to get in. Maybe maybe they've not had enough time to get used to the Gen 5 hardware, um, uh, software, and get that to a point where it's small enough to put on lower-powered PCs. But, but yeah, I think, as with most things, football games generally uh, are enjoyed on console. That said, we do play it on PCs, so, you know, but, but we, we have the benefit of having uh, reasonably powered PCs between us, so we can do that. But, but there you go. What are your thoughts, Pip? Yeah, I mean, Asim's literally just hit the nail on the head. They're basing their decisions on play data. Sounds sensible to me. If if the majority, and by majority, I mean an absolute landslide, is using the console at its minimum spec or a spec that they can run their PC at a decent enough rate, and the people who are playing it on ultra high um, or just ultra or whatever, the top tier one in is FIFA. I don't think I've ever played FIFA on PC before. Um, so if they're playing it on the, the toppest specs possible and it's like 1% of the people, then you're obviously cl- clearly going to cater your game to the majority. The brand new consoles only just come out. Give it 12 to 18 months and I can 
I can pretty much, well, then again, I say pretty much guarantee, look what we get in the Nintendo Switch from FIFA. Um, they've had legacy editions for the last two years, so I don't know whether or not that's due down to sales or they just don't, don't have the facility to be able to put more people on it to develop the game to be a decent enough standard. I honestly don't know, but um, in this respect, they are using data that's been provided to them, and I think for, for the time being, at least for this edition, it's the right choice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't argue against it. Uh, I mean, people can, and people will, and people probably already are across social media in that sort of sense. Um, but if they have data that says, all right, great, nice, we know that, that loads of our uh, community are playing on uh, 30, 90, 30, 80, 2080 TIs or whatever, great. That will absolutely have no problem smashing the ball out of the park, uh, baseball reference rather than football reference, but but absolutely have no problem running that game. That's wonderful. Yeah, great, wonderful. However, that's the top 10%. Uh, there is probably 20% below that that can still absolutely smash it out of the park, but then there's probably a good chunk that might struggle to run it, might, might not, and then there's also another significant chunk that won't be able to run it. And we don't want to. We don't want to base it around the top ten percent of aspirational users because uh, the install base on PC is probably not as large as console anyway. So the one thing we don't want to do is just get a smaller install base and then only aim at a percentage of it. If they have actual stats and data that says that a good chunk of users will not be able to run it, then there is no counter argument to that. Yes, you want it. Yes, you want the extras. Yes, you want to play it on your thirty ninety with all the bells and whistles, but your gaming uh, access is not superior to someone else. To quote Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. You are in the few if you are one of those people that has the top-end, super-duper, ultra-high-spec PCs. Not everyone has that. So making a game that is accessible, you can still play it on your PC, you just don't have access to all the functions. Having something is better than nothing. Um, and it works the other way. If you get something, you get all of the things, then other people get nothing. Uh, so that way everyone gets access to something or at least a large number of people get access to something so there's no issue with that for me it's it is a horrible situation for ea to be in but it's 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 a, a horrible decision that's been done correctly uh it's, there's no win there's no win in that situation um but they've picked the best one of the two um hashtag ad <laughs> says ask him about his ltv uh i want a monitor knowing uh as my look uh, kids will break my TV, says Steel Bonsai. I'll damage it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gary says, FIFA 21 on PC. <laughs> New FIFA is the same, the last one. Crap. <laughs> Plus 2021 is better, yeah. uh, says Steel Stay Bonsai. Frosty, yeah. Mr. Gatekeeper TV dropping the prime for 15 months. That's the chief colorer in Aurora at Ice Cream Uploads. Uh, the rabid pit bull. Thank you very much, Craig. Appreciate priming us Legend. up. He's in the prime of line. Appreciate it. Um, Daniel, who knows very much about uh, releasing uh, patches on PC, says, it's a shit sandwich. It's always a shit sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. I bet it is. Basing their decision on player data sounds sensible to me, says Asim, uh, which is what Bibby covered a minute ago. Yeah, I'm not sure it does, you know. I'm not sure it does. <laughs> uh, Steel Bonza says, I've really enjoyed playing it over FIFA. Both games are good. Both games are good. They offer very different things. I think if you can play both of them, it's the same thing as the Xbox and the PlayStation thing. Both are good. Both offer you different things. I prefer FIFA. Uh, Oh, oh, no, no, don't clip it. No, I prefer Pez. There we go, got the words. I was going to say PUBG as well then. I'm not even going to say Pez. I prefer Pez <laughs> over FIFA, but FIFA does so much stuff much better than Pez. Uh, if you want the best of both worlds, play both worlds. It's simple as that. Obviously, it costs more money, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, Gary says, I love some of the dual sense features on FIFA 21. The feel of a left foot shot on the left side of the controller sounds super cool. See, I didn't even read that bit. I saw about the um, if stamina will, will increase the... Uh, the how much you've got to press the haptic triggers, which sounds quality to me. You get an absolutely knackered player and you have to give it a proper proper tug to get the power behind it, just like if you were 112 minutes into a Champions League final and you're absolutely exhausted and you want to put your foot through a shot and you end up with like a, a powder puff shot, you have to punt it. I love that sort of stuff, but I didn't even see the left and right stuff. That does sound cool. That does sound cool. Um... Yeah, looking forward to how it plays with dual sense, says Mr. T. The usual PC cycle tends to be that after two years of a console launch, that PCs tend to start catching up to the consoles before overtaking until next gen console. So it's re uh, reasonable on the part of EA. Absolutely, it's, it's it's it's. I mean, if anything, it's probably that gap's probably been closed down a little bit more, so that consoles used to leap ahead and then PCs would catch up. But it sounds, it's we're probably in a world where consoles and console communities are more advanced and and react faster now 
than the not console pc communities react faster not that they never react fast before but they react faster now everyone sits and waits on the graphics cards announcements uh, announcements just like people have always sat and waited on the ps2 announcement the ps3 announcement i mean people were sat watching the nvidia geforce announcements and the amd announcements and so on so that i think it won't be two years before pcs i mean pcs pretty much are there anyway um so two years time pcs are going to be light years ahead and then we're going to sit on consoles for five years then we might get the pros or or the x series box one x boss box series plus ultra yeah. two or something like that but yeah 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 anyway anyway i'll stop talking because we are fairly deep this is probably the longest scoop we've ever had if not the longest for a long time so we will wrap things up uh, trouble is ea have no goodwill from fans they don't trust them so in addition is seen as is one from uh greed pov that is the price to pay for success um anyone that is the biggest company in the world um you usually get big because you're good at making money and being good at making money is is a very distrustful thing i'm not saying that they have or haven't earned that that reputation but yeah it is it, most companies once you get big it's hard to stay vanilla um, even if you you make vanilla decisions, not saying that EA have just made vanilla decisions, but it's hard to stay vanilla when you're that size. Um, I mean, obviously, if you've got loot boxes in your game, then it's very difficult. But still, that's <laughs> that's a completely different conversation that we will touch on another time because we are going to wrap things up now. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us in the stream today. A long old stream and a lot of conversation, as well as a bunch of subs. Thank you very much for all of those subs and La Roche for the bitters as well. Much much appreciated. Um, we are going to wrap things up. We will be back on the channel imminently. In about 10 15 minutes, we'll be back green screened to the max. Because speaking of football games on PC, we're going to play some Pez mm -hmm. Masters of the League episode yeah. 61. Woo! We'll be following this. So, if you want to see some football, if you want to see me and Bib step physically by the magic of green screen into the ICU arena to manage our football team, then join us as we continue with the adventures of Ice Cream Bubbles FC in season four of Masters of the League. That will follow this straight after this episode. So stick around in the channel. We usually drop a horse or a raid on someone, but, but we're going to be back. So we'll just go offline and then come back online. So feel free to hang around, grab yourself a brew, maybe a bacon butty or something like that. Maybe some eggs with ketchup if you're West. Um, <laughs> whatever, do what, do what you want to do, but we'll be back. Anyway, before we do disappear though, baby, is there anything that you'd like to add? Yes, if you do want to get involved with the podcast, then do feel free to uh, find us on all of our social media platforms. Spiral Alert is at Ice Cream World Lords across absolutely everything. Um, the second way you can find us, find us on Discord. Uh, there's a little area in there called The Scoop. All we need is the URL, your forced impressions. We will then give you our forced impressions in the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Groom? It will be at 10 a.m. Ish, ish, ish. Always the ish. Remember, obviously, this isn't our full time job. We do work around this. That's the reason why. It might be 10, it might be 11 ish. We will see. We will see. Probably we'll go to 11, usually close to 11. Although we did go live at 10.25 today, so there is that. Uh, uh, La Roche says that's what she said. Hey, okay, bye. Have fun. Bye, guys. Yeah. Oh, pimp you. Pimp you says, I can't wait, winky face. Uh, can, can we all go and send Pimp you some spam? I don't know who that person is. Uh, at all, but feel free to go send them a few. It's, it's Lee, by the way, from Team Ice Cream. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Hi, Lee! Hey! Uh, so, yeah, we are going to disappear. We'll be back at 10 a.m. ish tomorrow with the scoop. Uh, thank you, everyone, once again for joining us. We had a lot of viewers in. I, I love the fact that the scoop is growing day upon day as well. I appreciate that we have a lot of regular viewers. We appreciate you all sharing the news articles, be that through the DMs on social media like Gary did yesterday or through uh, the Discord, like a number of you keep doing as well. We appreciate that. You guys help make the show. Uh, but for now, we will stick a fork in it because it is done. We'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes with Master, Masters of the League. Until then, Bib, what they got to do? You gotta stay frosty.